hi all, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while, been a long while, but uh, I'm finally up to doing a bit of work. I've got a bit of work to do on the other channel, as some of you know I've got uh, got a general channel that I use for stuff I do around the farm here. And I've uh, been building a sleep out on that channel, which uh, has stalled thanks to getting a, a rather nasty and prolonged dose of 2020's finest vintage little round puffball bug. I um, got taken out for a good few months. I'm really just starting to bounce back now. Uh, I did sort of think I was coming back right and I did get into a little bit of work, but um, yeah, that, that kind of destroyed me. I uh, don't think I was ready to get back to it at all. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. What I've got is a record player and no this is not a record player but this is something I need to fix the record player and uh, I don't have a signal tracer well I have two signal tracers this is one of them this is a Philips GM7628 uh, which is I'm told quite a nice little signal tracer I've had this for quite a while but I've never actually really gotten around to using it uh, I would say it probably needs a full recap I have powered it up the attenuator switch here is very noisy. I don't fully know how to use it. I have downloaded a manual for it, so I'll figure it out. We've got RF and AF or HF and AF. Um, I assume that's RF. We've got the same on the actual probe itself, which may or may not come out of its holder. Um, the end here is actually a switch, so you rotate it round. Uh, that's HF and oscillator, AF and AVC. So there's a switch in there. There's also a diode in here. It's an OA50, I think, which is a, a four-legged sort of miniature valve a speaker switch, so internal speaker or the jacks. I, I'm pretty sure that this will be connection to the external speaker so that you can use that to uh, either test another speaker or test the speaker in the set. And... Um, a mode setting which again I need to do some reading and just work out what's what but I'm assuming that indicator will use the magic eye to um, indicate inbound signal but we'll see when we get into it anyway I'm going to pull this apart I'm going to recap it and then give the switches a bit of a clean put it back together and then we're going to give it a bit of a test and see if it works all right so we're inside the unit now I'm just going to reposition things so you can see a little better, but it looks like it's going to be reasonably straightforward to work on, which will be nice for a change, uh, if that is actually the case, of course. I've also managed to find layout diagrams, circuit diagram, parts layout for both above and below the chassis, and breakdown so I managed to find a full manual on this which was useful I remember looking for a manual for this years ago and all I could find was one that I think was in Dutch and uh, I don't speak Dutch which is why I only think that's what it was but it wasn't really a great deal of use in terms of operation I think uh, the operation should be fairly straightforward on this but uh, the main problem is going to be working out what capacitors are what and now we have everything we need. So, let's get organised and get into this. Replace all the caps. Uh, give the band switch a little bit, of, or the attenuator switch rather, a bit of a clean up. So it's not quite so crackly. And uh, give it some use. Now, I do have to say, I found one other channel that had worked on one of these. Uh, it was an Irish guy, I think. And... He mentioned a real oddity that I probably wouldn't have even picked up if he hadn't actually mentioned it. So, let's take a look. This is an EL41 output. And it's got a weird lip. It's like the glass diameter is tube up to here and then the cap is actually fitted inside it. I don't know that I've ever seen that before, except in his one as well. So I'd be really keen to know if anyone's actually seen that before or if this is a special type of EL41 or what on earth is going on there. Because it's uh, 
it's odd not something I've seen before at all so yeah um, Irish guy whose name I don't know if you're uh, watching this I have exactly the same EL41 very odd All right, that's going to give you guys the best view, but it's going to be a bugger to work on. So we'll just see how we go with it. I'm going to get myself a few components and get ready to start replacing them. And we'll see how we go. All right, so we've got a uh, shopping list complete. Got a tray of capacitors there. Um, having gone through and looked at the schematic and looked at the parts diagrams. Um, having written on each one what they should be. Uh, the only disparity that I've noted so far is this is actually a 32 mic, but it's actually a cathode bypass cap, so I don't think that's going to be a huge deal. Otherwise, uh, I'm just going to start working my way through and replacing these. There's a couple of values I don't have. This one's got me a little bit confused. This is a 470 pick, like half a nanofarad, and um, it's huge. Like there are no voltage ratings on the on the list, so I don't know what voltage it's supposed to be. It's very odd. Anyway, we're going to whip through and replace the caps. I won't throw the caps away, of course, just in case, but uh, it seems pretty straightforward. Famous last words. All right, you'll uh, need to excuse the weird angle I'm working on here. It's a bit of a confined space, but. Uh, I'll try and spread myself out as best I can without making too much of a mess here. First cap I'm going to work on is this one down here, which is listed as a 32, but it is in fact a 25 on the schematic. Now it is only a cathode bypass, so this is a 25 volt cap and that should be fine in that position. Ah, who should make an appearance? Actually, that was the puppy winding bud up. So, and this one's clamped in, so we've got to get it out. Now, it doesn't need to be here. I believe it's here for expedience, really. I mean, it's a big cap, and that's where there's some space. Uh, but we can probably get it down in where it goes. It is connected to the cathode directly. And then this here is going to be an earth point I expect all right so as I'm getting into this uh, I had to go and find <laughs> this earth and it's got a what looks like only a couple of earth points that are easy to find in here and one of them is down in here and if you go tracing that earth point it runs off in three different directions one of them is up to here and the tag strip here is uh, connected between those two tags, then it jumps across to the band switch, and then it pretty much runs right around the outside, and it branches off to a few other places, like the shield for the input probe. But this is definitely an earth point, um, which feeds circuitously to the almost the dead center of the chassis there. So I just had to confirm that that was the case. Now they've obviously done that for a reason, and I'm not really interested in changing the lead dress um, of this particular set. I'm not after high performance here, so I'm sure that if I did change the lead dress it wouldn't really affect my use case for it going forward. But then Philips engineers in the 50s knew what they were doing far more than I know what I'm doing in the 2020s so I am going to leave this capacitor here I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to attach it yet I don't have a huge amount of lead length but I could run the positive down to there put a zip tie around the body of the capacitor I think if I cut that leg there I can just bring it over and join it That might do. I am going to need a wee bit of heat shrink. Don't have any heat shrink handy and it's currently the middle of the night. I'm in the lounge. Every time I go outside it wakes the dogs up and they run through the house which wakes Nikki up which I'm going to try and avoid. 
because she's working silly early mornings at the moment. So what can I do? Well, I have some old wire here, and wire doesn't need to be heat shrink per se. Oh good. I'll just try reframing things a little bit there. I can't see the viewfinder of the camera because of the stupid angle I've got to be on in the corner here. Uh, so hopefully you can see I've just taken a piece of insulation off a bit of wire. That will get me to there, which I mean, technically I don't need to get to. I could, I could leave that capacitor connected at this end and then lift the earth. I don't know what kind of effect that will potentially have. So I don't know how good these blades are. J-hooking it. Call the J-hook police. Yep. I did it. I hoped, but it is going to work. Now, that used Coil, pigtail, which fell off. That is a pigtail with a wee tail of solder in it. I've never actually seen them used in the wild before, but thinking about using it back in, although that may be a pain in the butt. Really need some heat shrink on. Oh, I'm going to have to do it. All right. Please hold caller. All right, got myself a wee bit of heat shrink. And because the heat gun is too loud, uh, I've just brought in the blowtorch. It should do the job. So I'm not going to do anything too startling with this. I'm just going to J-hook this around the end of that wire. And then double it back on itself. Leave your complaints 
down below I promise to maybe read them That will never come off in here. No plane will crash. No sky will fall. It'll be all right. Stop now. Okay. Now, part of me wants to zip tie that. Part of me doesn't really care. That's a fairly rigid wire, it's not going anywhere. I can't... Uh, I'm not going to get that screw undone without potentially damaging these resistors on the attenuator block. Uh, it's buried under there, so not going to do that. Which is going to make... Uh, it's pretty rigid, so I'm not going to get a zip tie under there. You know what? I'm going to leave it. I promise to come and check it one day. And see how it is. One day. Someday. Not today. Alright, first capacitor changed. Let's go down the other end here. And in this block we've got a cap there which is 10 nanofarad and we've got one here which is 47. So that's a 0.05 and that's a 0.01. Double check that. So it's this one here, the top one is 0.01 C20 C20, 10,000 picofarad which is 10 nanofarad which is 0.01 and bottom one is one of those big fat black Philips ones although it's not, it seems slightly nicer than the ones you see in their radios supposedly 47 nanofarad, that is C10 has 47,000 picofarads, which is 47 nanofarads. So 0.05s, I think these big ones are the 0.05s. These were the ones that I got sent. Uh, I got sent. I did a reorder. Oh, there's something wrong. Damn it! Something wrong with my. It might be a flat battery. The capacitance meter. I built that years ago. These should be 0.05 or 47 nanofarad. Bang on. Look at that. Now 
and microfarads. Point oh five. Can we do picofarads? I don't think this does. It does millifarads? All right. Need to keep remembering to turn this off because the UT61E, at least from this era, does not have auto power off. It's something to do with the IR comms that it's got in the back here from memory. There was a bodge that you could do to remove some functionality and get auto power off back, but I have wasted a few batteries by forgetting to turn this off. So whilst I like this as a meter, that auto power off is a deal breaker. I wouldn't buy another one that didn't have it. Particularly when they use 9 volt batteries because 9 volt batteries are not cheap and they just don't really last so it's bad enough having to replace them in normal circumstances let alone uh, having to replace them just because you forgot to turn it off. Okay, so I'm going to do the 0.05 first. That's this big fat fluffy thing down here. Almost said a rude word. All right. Um, what have we got lead length here. We've got enough to go straight across there, so I don't have to save the legs really. These cutters, oh, I miss my good Xeron cutters, but I don't have 80 bucks to spend on a pair of cutters that I abuse, but I do have 3 bucks to spend on a pair of cutters that I abuse that are made out of cheese. Um, so, let's test this, just out of interest. I'm expecting the caps in this to be of reasonably good quality, but that doesn't mean they've lasted. 195 nanofarads. That seems wrong. That seems well out from where it should be. Vinny uh, is wondering about the music in the background because I'm inside and I just wanted something in the background. I'm listening to some lame ass royalty free elevator music. Just dulls the background noise. More than anything, it probably keeps the dogs from. Uh, hearing every single noise that's happening and barking for no reason. So let's hope that they weren't lying about the royalty free thing or I'm gonna have a real problem when I go to upload this. That would be a pain. Maybe I should have tested that. Pop the iron up a little bit.
All right. Dead cap score two. And what did I say this was? 0 0.01. So that's going to be. Uh, it's about 0.01s. That's 0 0.001. I did get some 0.01s out. 103, so that looks promising. Ten nanofarads, 0.01. Running out of my favourite solder. Man, I wish I'd grabbed the other roll of this. If anyone knows where you can get tin lead silver solder, not plumber's silver solder, but uh, I know I've had this conversation before, but I'm pretty sure that they use the silver as a um, just a minor alloy to help offset the different cooling rates of tin and lead. Um, I, I love this stuff, it is really good. There's a uh, cap alloy on the molded into the reel. I don't know. I'm kind of getting used to using the cheap Chinese stuff as well. We use that at work. Um, bought off AliExpress cheap. Uh, we don't use lead free. I don't use lead free. I'm not a lead free solder guy. Uh, I don't think making my job harder is uh, necessary. Um, your mileage may vary. But um, yeah, this, this stuff is just so nice to work with. Even it, it's quite dull, it's quite um, oxidized. And um, it still just solders beautifully. So I want more. I don't know if I'll ever find it. So that's the 0.01. Not going to be able to read it with that on there. Mm, that's not too bad, I suppose, if it's uh, genuinely 13 or 14 nanofarad. That one's pretty close, I think. Still not staying. But not bad. I'll try and slip that one in there. if I can. A few spider webs in here. Not too many, but there's a few. All right, I may be able to slip that behind the hook. It's a bit of this, whatever they put on here, this black paint, it doesn't clean off. So we may just be 
wrapping it over. So you might just do that, I think, rather than argue with it. We'll do that. Good, good. Okay, well, that's those two in. They're nice and neatly out of the way. One more to the dead cat list. All right, we've got these two weirdos here. And I don't say that with any loving affection at all. They are weirdos. Well, the top one's a weirdo. I don't really understand. It's marked. E470K, which makes it a point, is it a point 0.5, which would make more sense for its size. Maybe that is a point 0.5. Maybe I should refer to my documentation. Okay, it's a point 0.1. No, wait. It is supposed to be a 470 picofarad, according to my. It is 470 picofarad. All right. C7, 470 picofarad, C7 is up here, like it's some kind of maybe just an RF dump, so if anything comes in, gets amplified, any RF noise before it gets to the audio amp, um, that's all I can think of that doing, but 470k it should be 0.5, which is more of a power supply filter, I would have thought. I don't think that's a 470 picofarad. I don't think that's what it is at all. I think if we take this off, we're going to find it's a 0.5 microfarad. But, what would I know? Can you hear me up there? Because I'm kind of mumbling into the desk. Kind of relying on the, the microphone I've got fitted to the top of the camera here. Um... Maybe the background music is going to be more interesting than my babbling, but it's just my thought process as I'm going along. I'm really just babbling out loud. If you hear me say something dumb, uh, first of all, I apologise. And second, welcome to what I do sometimes. Saying something dumb is just par for the course around here. So, yeah, I don't know how visible that will be. Because, as I said, I can't really see the camera. But, 470K. Philips PRA. I'm sure that's a series of caps. I'm sure if I looked hard enough, I'd find information on that series of caps. Uh, if you want to look for me and tell me what it is, by all means. If you know... By all means, tell me. Uh, Bruce, if you're watching this, do you know? Yeah, look at that, 0.5 micro. Okay, so that makes more sense. I think that's actually just uh, final power supply filtering before the plate of the cap. Um, I could be wrong. If, if that does something else and you can make sense of that, then please tell me. Um, but 470 picofarad, definitely not right. So, 470 nanofarad. I did not bring any 0.5s in. 
because there weren't any needed. Bum. Right. I'm going to go and probably wake the dogs up again. But I'm just going to go and get a 0.5. Back in a minute. All right, I have returned with some 0.5s. I think I only need one, but I figured I'd bring a couple. You know, these ridiculously don't have long leads. They will just make it. Look at that. Good, good. Before I get this messed up, positives this end. I know you guys want to see, but actually, I can't even see what I'm doing, so. You're just going to have to deal with it. Now, this one... My cat leads don't reach, but they might reach... Yes, even to there it's going to be a struggle. The struggle is real. But, let's see what we can do. You won't see this, but I'm basically going to make this look slightly less than the pretty build that Phillips did. Because get to it there. Well I can but I've got to do something a bit janky. It's okay I can do things a wee bit janky. No one really minds, do they? Okay. Let me just get that soldered in. I'm not going back to the terminal strip. I'm going down to the earth wire that runs across the floor. It's all I can get to with the wire on this cat, which is a bit short. It'll be okay. Don't panic. Can you see what I did? If you can't, it's probably a good thing. Alright, now. Now I can put this on. Tip's getting a bit dirty. I want to go sticking it in with a dirty tip.
It's interesting, some old solders remind me of my childhood. And I pulled a lot of electronics apart when I was a kid. I got given stuff to pull apart. I think once Dad realised that I would pull anything apart that I found, um, the word went out on the grapevine, if you've got old electronics, Steve will pull them apart for you. He enjoys that. Don't throw them out. Give them to Steve to pull apart. And uh, pull them apart I did. And there's a particular smell that I associate with solder or, or just that smell of soldering electronics from the probably from the 70s and 80s which would have been I guess 60s, 70s, 80s would have been the era of electronics I was pulling apart. And uh, this has that smell. It's quite weird. I hadn't really thought about it until just now, but it's it's a, brought back a whole bunch of memories from when I was probably, oh, I don't know, maybe between sort of 10 and 15, 16, when I was doing that kind of electronic stuff at home. I don't, I don't recall having smelt that smell in a long while. Um, I'm guessing it's the flux. Because the flux is still on all these joints. It's never ever been cleaned off. Yeah, it's, it's a really distinctive smell. And it's right there in my brain. Okay, the two electrodes are in this can here. So I am guessing... That it's can negative because the can is actually oh yeah, the can's connected to earth right there so definitely can negative and never chop those off let's just chop those off yeah can negative and two 25 mic caps in that can now i've got 22s they will be fine so that one can stay as is so, I think what I'm going to do here is just zip tie these, tie the negative legs together and then run a wire across to the earth terminal and then bring the wires up to here. That's going to do the job. Alright, so there's our two 220s, there's my negative leg stuck together. Soldered together. Like I said, I will zip tie those to the body of the main electro and then I'm just going to bring the wires up and put a wee bit of heat shrink on them damn this is an awkward wee corner to work in this sitting down while I work is kind of weird um, some of you may have picked up from watching me that I stand up while I work I never sit and so sitting at this table which has barely got enough room for my legs under it with the chair as it is is kind of weird and not entirely comfortable
so many cobwebs. So I'm guessing this black paint was a QA thing that they were going around and just dabbing each one as they did it, maybe counting maybe part of the QA process. Um, I don't think it was any kind of sealer, like a lot of the black dots aren't even really on the actual solder joint itself. Um, again, if anyone knows, please elucidate. There's your big word for the day. So I've got quite a bit to get done. Some of you will have figured out by now that this is my first video in quite a while. And uh, I'm only doing this one because I was trying to do another video on the box that's beside me, which is a Stuart record player. And that was supposed to be just a quick uh, touch up and away. And it's turned into a bit of a nightmare. Um, that's for a, a friend who I had a look at another record player for them and it turned out to be a pile of junk that uh, as soon as I touched it it uh, pooped its knickers so uh, you know you know the rules last one to touch it clearly broke it so I've kind of just taken it upon myself to find a replacement or to repair it it all went horribly horribly wrong as it always does uh, got a replacement for it that turned into a pile of custard did actually blow up a couple of little amp boards I had trying to get the original record player going again spent way more hours than any one sane person should ever need to on a simple two transistor record player amp um, gave up in disgust and uh, had been kind of looking for something to do the job ever since. And a friend of mine, hi Dean, who I hadn't seen for a while, just had it sitting on his floor. And so uh, I said to him, what are you going to do with that? He said, I forget what he said, but uh, anyway, came home came home with me and here it is sitting on the bench waiting for love now because the radio is not working and there's nothing obvious uh, but it is old transistors it's old germanium transistors so it could be anything and I'm not a transistor guy my transistor skills despite the fact that I'm a child of the transistor age I grew up with transistors I kind of understand it but not um, my skills are more technician than engineer, as, as I've mentioned before. And so, um, I think some of you think I know a lot more than I really do, but uh, I make, make do with what I know. And so, um, I'll leave that. So, to fix that, I feel that I probably need a signal tracer. This is a signal tracer. But it's a signal tracer that needs some work. And the only other signal tracer I have is a Westminster one, I think. Which is probably in worse condition. Uh, so, hence, we are doing a repair. Alright, so I can shorten that wire up. This wire I can bring around a little bit. It's going to be very hard to put heat shrink on this. How am I going to do that? I think I know. It's 
much as I love these strippers, they did cause me some grief a few years back when I was fixing it was my first big major full resto and I was basically pulling apart uh, Philco 89B um, which I had bought and I had just got my teaching credentials and I decided to with my first pay treat myself and a very good friend of mine Frank Reed who some of you Christchurch guys will know very well known radio serviceman in the Christchurch area who's um, just recently gone into care he's 90 something um, was my very much my mentor as I came up and sort of learned the stuff. Um, he had an old Philco 89B Cathedral, 1933 I think, and they were still worth good money then. This one was in quite a state, and. Uh, I don't think he was planning to sell it, but I was kind of I quite liked the look of it, and I said to him, I said, "What would you sell it for?" And he told me, I think it was a hundred dollars, which to me back then, having just uh, going through a few things in life, as you do, plus having just taken a year out of work to go to university and get a teaching degree, that was a fair chunk of change, and I decided that what the hell. I will treat myself and treat myself I did I bought it fully stripped it and restored it now one of the things I found was that the first or second IF I can't remember which they're both quite different in that. They're very early super hits from Philco. And the two IF cans were quite different. Or IF coils. They weren't cans. Um, was crook. And so I thought, bugger. Well, that might deaden the water me a little bit. And I had a bit of a look around and I found on Playthings of Past which if you've never seen it I think is just an old guy with a warehouse of old parts, old new old stock stuff and he had two he had a first and a second IF for a Philco 89B in stock on the shelf brand new what are the odds? so I bought them both um, I only needed one but postage was a killer and he had a minimum order he's um, one of those fairly crusty no nonsense no sense of humor this is the rules kind of a guy which is fine I don't mind that bought them got them here and I had to strip one of the wires from the IF coil. Now the, the wires, I'll, I'll put a photo if I can find one, but the, the wires are basically standard insulated wire that is stapled to the wooden former and then after the staple the actual Litz wire is soldered to that and then it comes off and it goes to where it's going. Now these are great because this jaw clamps the insulation, the blades bite into the insulation and then as you do this uh, the insulation's held and the snipped insulation is just stripped off and then it sits there and pops back now one thing that I do reasonably often this finger sits behind it and as that pops back in it'll pinch me right there and make me say rude words but the other thing that can go wrong with these is if you're working at an awkward angle and I was 
and the insulation is not trapped in here, it just bites there and not there, then you'll end up pulling. Now that's fine because if the wire is long enough this will just move and the wire will just move but if it's not long enough and the body of a say an 80 or 90 year old IF transformer gets trapped behind the lip of this you'll tear the wire right out of the former and if you're not looking if you're on this kind of angle and you can't see then you'll tear the wire the staple everything out of the uh, wood and then you'll tear the lit's wire which is well let's just say rude words were mentioned many times uh, I was not a happy camper at all but luckily I was able to get the uh, wire back in and um, re, I re bonked the staple into it and then I remelted the wax and all was good and in fact that radio goes blooming well for a little five valve from 1933 at the time I was living out in the country um, in the complete opposite direction to where I live out in the country now with a tiny bit of wire like I'm talking a bit of wire like that just hanging off the aerial terminal at the back I managed to pick up quite a few stations and quite well and this was after a complete strip and reassemble which kind of blew my mind because I was really expecting a lot of problems but it worked with one minor hiccup but uh, maybe I'll talk about that one day it did work, it worked really well and so my repair had clearly worked I was very very fortunate to uh, get away with that so here's the green wire the earth wire I need to route via a bit more wire. Why didn't I bring in some wire? It would have made some really good sense to have bought some uh, I have a roll of 09 mil wire that is really good for this kind of thing. But it's in the garage. I've been out to the garage a few times now. And there's a point where you just don't want to go out to the garage anymore. So you don't. So you make it work. That's a little bit ugly, but it won't be in a second. There we go. What's that down there? Oh, that might be the plug from the Electro, which has, does look like it's blown its cookies. I hadn't seen that. 
Yeah, I think that was the plug out of the end of the electro. So this was definitely a power supply in distress. Not in the stress. Power supply in the stress would be somewhat amusing. Right, so I'm going to manually sort of pigtail this around here. there and then double that back on itself so it can't ever fall off not that it ever could but it definitely can't now solder that one on Slip a little bit of heat shrink over it. Just trim that back a wee bit. Yeah, one of the nice things about heat shrink is that when it's nice and warm and sticky, it can be molded. So one of the things you can do Hold it in place till it cools, but you can also crimp it and that will seal off the end. Stop now. to burn itself out so yeah that one will hold over it because there's a, a lump of wire but the end was open so crimping it with pliers when it's hot it'll actually seal with itself even though this isn't double walled um, or glue line heat shrink it does stick nicely to itself when you do that so even if that ever comes off it's not anywhere near anything it's not touching anything the original contacts were sitting out in the open these are nice and firmly installed. So that's that bit done. Right, we've got another cap down under here, which is going to be a fun one to get to. Okay, so we've done these two, we've done these two, and we've done these two. So this 22 nanofarad is the next one I need to get to. It's a bit of a pain because it's right down the bottom of the stack. Then I've got a couple of point ones here. And... I've done that one so actually these three are the last on the underside then I've got a couple on the top side and we're done 
I haven't checked any resistors. I may spot check a couple, but um, my experience with Phillips resistors has always been that they are pretty on the money. They're pretty good. Alright. So, camera card ran out. I don't know where it ended, so uh, I guess you may have missed a little bit. So we have the 22 nanofarad capacitor installed. All that remains are two point ones, these two, and then a couple on the other side. So to get to these, it's going to be a pain, just like all the rest, predominantly because there's a few other components in the way. But I think I can work around it. It'll be a little bit awkward, but we'll make do. Not really my kind of music in the background, but if I start playing Prodigy or something just a little bit more interesting. Then I guess you'll never get to see this video, or at least you'll never get any audio with it. So, uh, oh, but, okay, dogs sorted, they're in bed, where were we? This is the kind of thing that can actually uh, cause you a great deal of grief if you're not thinking. One of the tricks that I learned from John in Arkansas, actually, a long time ago, was to use alligator clippy leads. And as you take a capacitor off, clip one clip where it came from on one side. Just take the other side off, clip a lead on there. And as long as you do one at a time, you can't forget where it came from. You know, it only takes the doorbell to ring or the phone to ring or someone to call out for you or the dogs to appear in the middle of the night and you've immediately lost track. Now luckily I do know where I was at and uh, I can put this back where it came from but that's it's a real gotcha and it's really easy to get distracted by something like what just happened and then you're in trouble. Hundred and thirty nanofarad, so that's not too far out of spec. These caps are not bad for their age. PRA, as I said, I think that's the series of cap. It seems to be the predominant type of cap in here. E one hundred K, so point one. E one hundred K dash A. Fifty nine. I don't know if that's a year code because the others. That's got, it's actually 5.9, that's got 9.9 .9 on it. I don't know what that code means at the bottom. Alright. These are my point ones. I don't think putting the top one in is going to restrict access to the bottom one in any meaningful way. Yeah, as I was saying, this isn't my not my favourite music, but um, having some music on does stop the dogs from 
reacting to tiny little noises. Uh, so I tend to have it on for that if nothing else I guess. And it's got to be something that won't trigger the copyright gods. There's a really good video if you haven't seen it by Tom Scott on copyright and he does a bit of a deep dive into uh, into copyright and YouTube and his uh, takeaway is that um, YouTube's copyright system is not actually broken even though it's a pain in the butt um, copyright law itself is broken but it's a good video it's it's about 45 minutes long so it's quite a watch but it is I think worth the watch it's uh, like most of Tom Scott videos it's well researched and well done he explains the problem well goes a little bit into fair use but fair use it's not a thing in New Zealand it's an American law and I do hear occasionally people in New Zealand talking about fair use as if it's a thing you can apply but uh, whilst there is a, a similar sort of concept in New Zealand law I believe uh, fair use itself not a thing all right last one under here and it's going to be a bloody cracker to get at there's basically no room at all can't get the cutters in there I'm going to have to uh, get medieval on its A piece. That's one end out. That end connects to the black wire. Now I've got myself worried about remembering where things came from. the last one out. Managed to dehome that black wire. Let's double check this one. Well that one seems to have climbed quite a bit. That should be a point 0.1. It's point 0.34 effectively. So not ideal but it's being replaced so it doesn't really matter It's taken a wee while to solidify there. We'll get to its eutectic point. Yeah, there's another big word for the day. I 
think that one means the point at which it changes from a liquid to a solid or the range that it goes through changing from a liquid to a solid something like that So, if I can, I'm just going to trim the end of that particular wire off. Maybe I'll be able to do that. Or not. I hate how sometimes it seems like the easiest thing in the world to get to the end of a piece of wire until you stick your, dig, your bloody snips in. Try and do it. And then you realise you can't. So we'll just move it out of the way. Alright. That's all the capacitors we need to do under here. I'm going to do a quick spot check of a few resistors just to see where they're at. This one should be 22k. Pretty good. This one should be 220. Pretty good. This looks like 20k. <laughs> Pretty good. Uh, this one is grey, so what's that? 8 to 820k k. it's orange not blue uh, yellow rather so 82 it's 90 it's within tolerance uh, it'll be a 10% resistor so 82 plus 8.2 takes it to over 90 so it's just in tolerance but it will be good enough yeah, I think these resistors are going to be fine. One meg, 1.05 meg, that's, yeah, I'm happy with those. Okay, so my work under here is done. There's two caps on the top here. One of them is actually, let's just check. Is that going to be a one meg resistor? One meg resistors on Magic Eyes are known weak points. 1.16. It's, uh, it's a little high, but that's fine. Okay. So, we've got one of the big fat black ones, which I think from memory the big fat black one is a 2.2 nanofarad and then tucked right in the corner here where it's going to be fun, such fun. Is a 10 nanofarad or a 0.01. Pretty dirty. I'll just see if I can blow a bit of the dust off with some parts cleaner. This is to do the switches when I get to that. Uh, it's not deoxid. Can't afford fancy stuff like that. It's just parts cleaner. Electrical contact cleaner. Just let that flash off for a bit before we go in. Uh, 
while it's doing that, I'll point out something interesting. And I think I seem to recall David Tipton coming across one of these a while back. Um, we've got a fuse, or what I think is a fuse, a spring loaded fuse on the side of the transformer. So we've got a coil here and some contacts and then a little arm. And I'm not sure what part of this is actually the uh, weak point. It could well be the solder across the bottom of the saddle that goes off the end of the spring. Um, or it could be that whole arm itself. But my understanding is that at a certain temperature, thermal fuse, low melting point solder, and that will let go if the transformer overheats and then pull away thus breaking the circuit. Uh, fortunately it's intact because uh, I'm way more patient than I used to be but I don't know if I'd be patient enough to figure out creating a uh, replacement thermal fuse for that. I'd probably go and find a thermal fuse. But pretty clever idea if that's what that is. I think that's what that is. Again, if you know, leave a comment. Um, I know these aren't the most interesting videos in the world where I sit and do do a whole repair and I'm probably not going to cut a whole lot from this because I haven't got the time or inclination to uh, to do so which means you will be watching the whole thing if you're watching it at all if you like videos like this, I know some people do, and I know that uh, a couple of you have commented in the past that you like that I leave them long form. Um, but then others go, you know, oh, that's too long, I can't be bothered watching all of that, damn it, time. Yeah, let me know. What do you prefer? long videos where pretty much the whole thing's left in or short videos where I mercilessly edit the crap out and uh, speed whole sections up just to get it done what's your preference? Because I don't really mind. I, I kind of enjoy the editing, but it is a huge time soak. Anyone that's edited videos before, and I'm definitely not that good at it, which probably doesn't help the amount of time it takes me to do one. Um, but if you've edited videos before, you'll know that there's easily as much time in editing, if not for me, it's often two or three times the amount of time I spend filming messing around with DaVinci Resolve, which I really like, but you know, I only have so many hours in a day and I have plenty of other things that I also need to be doing. And uh, I'm very behind because I've been out of action for well, a better part of this year really. 7.9 nanofarad should be 2.2 so that's definitely high 2.2 nanofarad I think that's that one there 2.3 that's us yeah so if you prefer short videos I'm happy to make them I'm not not trying to uh, get out of making them because like I said I do kind of enjoy it and it's not when I say get out of making them it's not like this is my homework and I have to do it for you guys I do do it because I enjoy it uh, if I didn't enjoy it I wouldn't do it it's not a job 
that's a hobby it's something I enjoy if you guys want to pay me to do it then I'll consider it but otherwise actually one thing I know about me is you can't pay me to do something I don't enjoy that has never been a thing I could do if I'm not enjoying it I will get up and walk away and I have several ex-bosses who will attest to that and not all of them bad bosses some of them were. Boy God, I've had some shocking bosses. At least one of whom I quit the job because if I stayed much longer I would probably have ended up on assault charges because that guy really needed a punch in the face. Not my favourite boss I've ever had, but then I heard not too long ago that the uh, government caught up with him over something he'd done and he was uh, in a bit of trouble, so wasn't surprised, but I was amused and <laughs> mildly happy about that. Some interesting techniques. He was a gift of the gab. Uh, salesman pretty much a used car salesman I think that's where he started and used car sales and it showed he was an IT guy and we used to just whatever was on special was what he would go out and tell the customers they needed right that's a 0.01 0.3 nanofarad. No, that's not right. 17, so that's high as well. All right. This should be the last one, and we should need a 0.1. Ten nanofarad. On the money. Right. Last cap. Also, on the off chance that you're still watching this, do me a favour and hit the like button. I don't think that will do absolutely anything for my channel. But everyone else tells you that it really helps your channel out. And Not that I really care. I'm watching some of the stuff that YouTube's doing to creators at the moment. There's a new uh, a new bug in the system, and they're basically screwing over mid-sized channels. YouTube is basically claiming that that paying for clicks to get more views to falsify their uh, their viewership and therefore lose their ad revenue and you've got these small companies where people are really trying to start up a channel and turn it into a small business and uh, YouTube's just taken away in some cases 80 or 90 percent of their income based on what people are claiming is utter nonsense You can kind of see why there's such a need for Patreon because if I had to rely on this platform to survive I would not uh, trust it as far as I could spit it because YouTube just seems to prove time and time again that they're an advertising company and despite all the we care about creators mental health and 
we're taking away the dislike button because blah 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 they just seem to pray at the altar of the almighty dollar and they do not care about anything else and the idea that they somehow care about creators mental health or well-being is uh, well it's laughable they're a corporation so they care about shareholders and they care about profit um, and they're getting screwed over by claims that they're not actually delivering the ads that they say they will to the people they say they will I mean, this is just another another aspect of that I guess it's not okay but I don't begrudge them the opportunity to make a bit of money they are running a pretty large scale system but I just wish they'd do it in such a way that they actually supported the people who were making them all the money because without the creators there'd be no content with no content advertisers wouldn't be here anyway that's enough renting. I am done. I'm going to give the uh, band switches or the selector switches a bit of a hoozle. Um, and then I'm going to reassemble it. this dry before Alright, I'm going to let this dry, I'm going to put it all back together and then we'll go from there. Alright, there we go, she's all back together, giving it a bit of a clean, um, we'll see how it works. Put a bit of rag behind, okay so, if I understand it correctly, um, this multiplier should actually be a divide. Yeah, I, I think this is the highest setting. And that's the, the lowest setting. Maybe it's the pattern multiplier rather than the signal level one. Anyway, let's, um, let's fire up the signal gen behind it. See if we can get a signal out of there. Let's go to about there. Right, we're going to be going for RF. So we'll switch this to HF, RF. And I believe. We should get something out of it. I'm not seeing anything. Not seeing the eye light up. What have I done wrong? Ooh. Okay. 
What have I done wrong? All right. Came with no screws. So, um, I didn't leave the screws out, they just were never there. So, I guess first rule. Thou shalt check voltages. So we have 227 volts AC on each of the plates. Pins aren't numbered. Can't remember offhand what they are. But I'm guessing that the filament for the AZ41. And what's an AZ41? A series in the old valves was 4 volt, but surely an AZ41 is 6.3 volt or something sensible. Winding S3 colours and also not marked. I think red and green in there are going to be the heater. AC volts. Four point two volts. What do you know? So AZ forty one probably is a four volt heater. Um, so that's fine. We should now be able to check from the chassis two hundred and thirty volts. Two hundred and thirty volts. So it should be two twenty seven, I think, according to the or two thirty seven. So we're okay there. We've got voltage into the rectifier. Let's check. Um, I just wanted to make sure both sides of the rectifier had voltage there. Let's check if I can get on here. One point one volt. Minus 1.1 volt DC. Okay, so we've got no HT. So have we nicked the rectifier? Well, I hope not. Because an AZ41 is not something I'm going to have lying about. Let's unplug it. And uh, yeah, that's... That's going to be a bugger if that's the case. Of course I did wiggle the valves. There's definitely an AZ41. Wash its head a little bit. The pins are a little bit tarnished, but I've seen a lot worse, and I would expect those to to work. Let's just try reseating it. Because I did give them a bit of a wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Tea's gone cold. That's another thing. Drinking tea. I used to drink a lot of coffee. But COVID destroyed the taste of coffee for me. Anyone else experience anything like that? I um I can't drink coffee anymore. 
Um, coffee tastes like somebody just dunked some corrugated cardboard in hot water. I used to drink, we've got a full two group cafe style espresso machine in our kitchen. I, I used to drink coffee like it was going out of fashion, but uh, I can no more. And um, tea to me always tasted like cardboard and water anyway, so I can drink tea because it tastes <laughs> it tastes perfectly fine like it's supposed to. But um, yeah, completely ruined coffee for me, which is a blessing and a curse because I like coffee, but I drank a lot of it. Um, and while I was at work, I was buying a lot of coffee. So I've saved a bit of money, I guess. But um, yeah, weird. Anyone else had that? Or is it just me? Am I just the weird one? Alright. Let's try again. DC volts. Haha! <laughs> that sound is promising. I reckon we've got HT again now. Uh, let's put that one down on there. Yep. So, we're looking about what, 1, 115, 120 out of the second smoothing cap, and According to the schematic, really hard to read, but uh, it looks like 250 on the first one and one something on the second. So I would say we're back in business. I think it was just a dodgy connection on the rectifier. So let's power that down. Unplug it, just cause. Flip it over. Get that out of the way. All right, so we're up and running. And um, this is, <laughs> I'm repeating this section because I just realized you were completely out of frame. It's a real pain sitting here. I cannot see the camera that easily. And I completely missed the fact that I'd changed it. Um, so I don't know what you haven't seen because I haven't actually checked but uh, we can prove that this is working which is good um, it's currently on HF or RF I've got the SIGGEN with modulation on and down at the loud end if I come even near the output You can hear it. If I put that on the wire, it's going to overload everything and distort all the heck. Uh, but one thing that you can really see, and I'm hoping you'll pick it up in the magic eye, but you may not. Um, as I come onto that signal, the eye is closing. Uh, it's, yeah, it's fully open. There it's basically fully closed. So the eye is actually working as well, which is good. Um, I don't yet know what any of these other settings are for and so I'm just going to leave those alone but as I come around and um, pad this it's working I can't test audio just quite at the moment because I don't have an audio source although yeah no it would be too much of a pain to set one up just at the moment but I did actually test the audio source on it earlier um, when it was really scratchy and, and not, not running particularly well and that was fine. So actually I think this is done. I think I'm going to be able to use this now. So hopefully not too long after you see this video come out you'll see one for a friend of mine Mandy whose record player is just sitting right there that I need this for and uh, I'll explain in that video what's going on with that but it's another one of those jobs that's been sitting around way too long um, this year has not been great but uh, and in fact this may be the first repair I've done all year don't quote me on that 
but I don't recall actually touching anything electronic at home. Um, I've done it at work, but I haven't touched anything electronic at home since last year, I think. Uh, just have not had the headspace for it. Oh, I didn't have the time for it when I was building, and I do not have the headspace for it right now. But um, yeah, this is done. The Atwater Kent, I need to get onto that, so hopefully you'll see another part to that. I, I made a decision on that one, if you recall, and you probably don't, <laughs> I barely recall. The Atwater Kent was at a point where I discovered that the RF sub-chassis was wired with some updates. There were some resistors in there that didn't match the circuit I had. I wasn't sure what I was going to do about that, because they're big, long, flexible resistors, and they are completely shot. Uh, so I have no idea what value they were. Um, my plan there is to actually take it back to factory spec. So take it back to its original design, which worked just fine. Um, the, the modifications and changes were made, but I don't know why they were made. And I can't do anything about that um, because there's no published uh, circuit for those updates that I have been able to find. I did find one other reasonably detailed restoration of an AK-708 and he took it back to original when he did his one as well, probably for the same reason. So that's my plan at this point. I'm going to take that one back to original, which is going to remove um, a, a sort of a mental barrier I had with that, trying to work out what on earth I was going to do with it. So if I take it back to that original spec, then I don't have to worry about it. Just follow the original circuit as supplied in the writer's manual and um, hopefully we'll get that back together in the next couple of weeks. I, I'm, I'm really keen to get that off my bench and then get onto the cabinet. I really want to get it finished. I, I, I feel kind of bad because it's been loitering around here. I mean I did tell the guy it was going to take me a long time but I, even I didn't actually anticipate that it would be a number of years sitting here um, waiting to get done. So I'm keen to get it finished now that I've kind of got back into it. And if I can knock that out, that clears half of my bench, which is an absolute bloody shambles at the moment, which is why I'm in here. And then I can get back into uh, the Pacific and, and other things that I really would like to do instead of all these things that I need to do. OK, well, that's enough waffle for me. I'm done here and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. We'll, uh, we'll catch you soon.